Right, I decided I want to make a little help for those that were trying to connect their rigid body objects but weren't able to do it. So, um, and that was because there's this one one thing that everybody would jump over and I couldn't see what they were doing. And I'm going to show you what that is. So when it falls down, it'll break and crack, uh, just like in the tutorials. Um, and here we go. All right, so we'll go ahead and start over. Delete that. We just need the cube. Turn on the screencast keys real quick. Go ahead and delete those two. Move the cube up on the z-axis. And then I want to add in a add in a I want to add in a plane. All right, we'll make this passive, right? So it won't part of the physics world, but all right, it's over here in this tab here in the rigid body, make that passive. We can also then we make this one active. We can, this is also we can go rigid body at active. And therefore, that's going to fall and then not go through anymore. All right, so falling is cool, but it's not cracking or doing anything. So go ahead and remove that from the rigid body. And we want the cell effect here, cell fracture, and that's in the preferences. So you go to preferences, add on, add ons. And we're going to look up cell, cell fracture. Let's see, cell, just with one, one C. Cell fracture, there it is, is already enabled. All right, it's always installed. So now cell fracture is installed. Then it's under the quick effects. So you go object, and then uh, quick effects, and cell fracture. Now we can do own particles, but there are no particles. It's going to do. It's actually on vertices, and so it makes these extra meshes, meshes which appear over here. And if we make those then um, active, and drop it, and they can fall. And when they hit something, there, right? They they all crack and fall apart, which is cool, but it's not like really crackly like you saw before, like this rock type effect. So I go ahead and delete all those and start over again. What you do is add particles. You go to the particles over here and add some particles. I'm gonna put a hundred because my computer's slow. And everybody says you should do the frame start and end at one for whatever reason. And this that the emissions should come from the volume. And that took me a long time to find because it's nested inside emission. I kept looking for a normal tab. So that's a mistake. It's right there. So rigid body, we're not going to add it. We're going to add it active after we break it. So quick effects, go cell fracture. And this time at 100, we just leave the default settings and go ahead and crack that into 100 pieces. Of course, that we're going to make maybe up to 100 meshes here. And I'll make a big mess. So I'm going to put that in its own collection. Just type M and put a new collection. Give it a useful name. Okay. And then I'll go ahead, so in there, and the original cube is there, and we'll go ahead and just um, hide it for now. All right, it's not active, so go ahead, object, and then we can make it uh, active. So it falls, boom, and it cracks and shatters. That's great, but now how do we connect it? I said, okay, I got this far in all the tutorials. Now I want to connect it. Everybody selects some of it, select it, and you go to object. Rigid body connect, but it's not there. It's not available. And I was like, okay, what am I doing wrong? How can it not be available? I saw everybody do it, at least four or five tutorials. Um, maybe it's in the other menu, or maybe I selected it wrong somehow. So I clicked on rigid body constraint, and of course, something is constrained to something, but it's somehow not active. So I was confused. I'm going to try it again, maybe. Okay, let's go, give it a go here. Um, it should work, right? Select it, object, and it's not there. And that's because you notice there's not a little orange dot. There it is. There's nothing was selected. So sometimes you can have not a single object selected or even a default object that's left over. So we'll go ahead and select those. Deselect that one with click. And now um, they're connected. Dropped it. Oh, that didn't work because the um, constraints are just a little bit too close. So those should be pulled away. All right, so you see that those are connected. We can just select those and pull those to the side with G. Now when it falls down, boom. Sure enough, there it is. Some of it's connected and they're all falling apart. And that's what I was looking for the whole time. Ah, brilliant. Boom, let it shatter again. Excellent. All right, and that then we have here, you'll see if we select those, Right, it was the first cube that was selected, and now it, when you push connect, it automatically connects all of those to that one, one selected object. Right, 
which makes sense after you think about it. So it's just not being selected with this orange dot. That's what was going on. Now, um, so this, uh, we can change it. Maybe I want that to break, right? So if it, if it hits hard enough, it can stay together, but then it should break. So you say we click breakable. So I said, okay, well, I'll select that one. Then I'll shift select the rest and then make it breakable, right? But that doesn't work either. So if you look at the tutorials and then say, ah, uh, okay, what, move that one over there. Um, then all you have to do is uh, do um, select it and do alt click. Um, but that didn't work. And then you read and then alt click. Well, that's mimicking the middle mouse button. So I click the middle mouse button. That doesn't work either. And that's because, and my preference is I left on in the input, um, emulate the three button mouse. So you go there, the middle mouse button still doesn't work. But if you do alt left click, ah, then it works. Everything is set to breakable. Um, and then it's going to work. And now it's going to break. No, it didn't break. And that's because the threshold is too high for this. This falls. There's not enough um, falling to break it. So go ahead and lower the threshold. And that can be done too by just holding on Alt and, and, and clicking the parameter that you want. And that should then apply everything to all of those selected objects. So let's lower it to two. Let's see what happens. Boom. Okay, not enough. Maybe lower it a little bit more. Okay, go ahead and then respool the film to the beginning. Let it fall. It's going to recalculate. And, ah, oh, nice. There we go. Now I can start doing some, some interesting things. I hope this short tutorial helped you a lot. Happy blending.